Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone and welcome home. Today, we're gonna talk about the Deepin 20 beta. Whenever anybody sees Deepin for the first time, their initial reaction is always the same. Oh, that looks gorgeous. You know, Deepin makes a fantastic first impression. It's modern, it's slick. It just, it sets a really high bar for the aesthetics of a Linux desktop environment. And with all the praise that I've given it, both here and at Forbes, why isn't it my daily driver? Well, with this week's brand new release of the Deepin 20 beta, I wanted to explore that a bit further and give you my impressions from my first 24 hours with the Deepin 20 beta. Here we go. Let's start with the installation of Deepin 20. Look, the majority of Linux installers are serviceable, but Deepin's actually looks modern and it makes Windows 10s look like a relic. The prior version of Deepin had a fantastic installer and Deepin 20 makes some iterative improvements on it. It's snappy, it's colorful, it's smartly branded, and it's easy to navigate. I installed the Deepin 20 beta on a virtual machine using VirtualBox, which is not really the preferred way to experience this desktop. But the distro does smartly recognize VM usage and recommends using it without effects enabled. I also installed it straight to the metal on both a Dell XPS 13 and a System76 Oryx Pro. Now, all three of these went really smoothly, whether I was nuking the entire disk or doing manual partitioning. Any operating system that gives me a tightly produced welcome video immediately gets my nod of approval. Deepin 20's welcome video is brief and it introduces you to a handful of major new features in about a minute. The welcome app also invites you to select a few appearance defaults. For desktop mode, you can choose between fashion, which resembles Mac OS and elementary OS with that centered dock. And then efficient gives you a desktop paradigm similar to Windows, and these can be changed at any time. The running mode will have you choose between effects for more powerful computers or normal mode to reduce window effects and animations on lower powered PCs. And then there's an icon selection where you can choose between four sets of icons, including Deepin's Bloom and Bloom Dark. Now I have one minor gripe here, not having the option to select an overall system-wide theme, you know, light or dark, is a curious omission, especially since the choice for a corresponding icon theme set is here. All right, so we've made our choices, and now let's dive into the control center. There has been a substantial change to the Deepin Control Center, and I have to confess, I miss the old version that elegantly slid out from the right side of the screen. Now, it's a more traditional window interface, but thankfully, it does retain all the functionality. I'll admit it's probably easier to navigate now due to its more traditional presentation, but the Deepin 15 version was just so slick and it really differentiated itself from every other system settings application across every OS in existence. When it comes to customization, Deepin offers a flexible desktop presentation, similar to what you've seen in Zorin OS 15 or Ubuntu Mate. For people new to Linux, the easiest way of explaining this is that you can toggle a Windows-like or Mac OS-like layout with a traditional system panel and tray or a centered dock that you can tweak and relocate to other sides of the display. Resizing the dock or panel is also a breeze. You just highlight the edge and drag it up or down. You can even add multiple levels of transparency and that really shines when it auto adapts to your chosen wallpaper. Of course, Deepin 20 gives you the now mandatory dark mode option, which looks amazing. Though I have to say the default light mode can be blindingly bright at times, but there is some flexibility in the mix. For example, setting your system theme to auto will switch between light and dark modes based on the time of day. You can also independently toggle most of the apps between light and dark mode if you don't wanna fully commit to either one system-wide. Oh, and uh, there are a ton of screensavers. Remember those flying toasters? <laughs> those are present and accounted for. I also love how you can toggle wallpapers and screensavers with an overlay that slides up from the bottom of the screen instead of launching into a separate window. Now for some rapid fire impressions of a few of the apps that are built into Deepin 20. The file browser. I absolutely adore the presentation here, especially from the home folder and especially with that pop of dark mode. Folder icons have this slightly raised appearance that lends a 3D look to them. 
Now the basic functionality you'd expect is here, and some extras that I appreciate from elementary OS, like the ability to color tag certain files and folders. No frills really, but Deepin isn't necessarily intended for power users. Two things I appreciated based on my brief experience are that you can set a share password from any file or folder locations right in the browser. And Deepin20's wallpapers, they're actually found in a normal place, inside the pictures folder, inside of a wallpaper folder. Deepin Movie, with support for basically every video format out there, as well as streaming options, Deepin Movie covers the bases, but it has one bonus that surprised me, a burst screenshot mode. Click this and it'll index its way through the entire video, then save a bunch of thumbnails. Now, for those of you of a certain age, it looks a bit like that single sheet you'd get when getting your old school rolls of film developed. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to save these burst shots as separate full resolution images, and I hope that's something that's coming. Deep in Music is certainly an app for playing your music. This one is fairly bare bones and doesn't remotely rise to the robust awesomeness of Lollipop, which is my preferred app for all things music. If you do want to see my favorite Linux music app in action, look up right about now and you should see a link to click over to that video. All right, Deepin Screen Capture. This is so useful that I think it actually deserves a standalone video. This built-in screenshot utility totally embarrasses the default choices from any other operating system or Linux distribution, and I think they should all be taking notes here. Fire it up and you can effortlessly capture your entire screen or a window or just make a manual selection. But you can also record a GIF or an MP4 video up to 30 FPS. If that's not enough for you, you can toggle your microphone and webcam and slap those on top. It's, it's really delightful to see such a basic app like this infused with so many features. Deepin Terminal. Command line warriors might appreciate this one. Deepin's take on the classic terminal ships with literally dozens of color palettes, a Gwake style drop down terminal option, and multiple split screen options among several other nice additions. One oddity that I noticed though is you can't properly snap the terminal window to the top edges of the screen. It's like there's this invisible barrier preventing it, and this behavior wasn't visible with other apps that I tried. Deepin System Monitor, still the best looking built-in resource monitor around, with KDE Plasmas coming in a very close second. Okay, the Deepin App Store. This is where some of the gotchas start manifesting. It's, it's not that the feature set of Deepin Software Center is lacking, Quite the opposite. I love that you can queue up multiple downloads and track their progress, things like that. But there are some crucial apps completely missing. My searches for Steam, OBS Studio, and Caden Live all came up empty, and that's kind of a deal breaker for me. It also warrants mentioning that loading speeds for the App Store were horrendous during my initial testing. It's forgivable right now because we're we're early in Deep in 20s beta. But if that persists, I will consider it completely unusable. Now we're gonna get into some bad news territory, specifically if you are an NVIDIA user. If you have a hybrid graphics laptop, that is a laptop with an Intel CPU and NVIDIA GPU, or you have a PC with a dedicated NVIDIA card, you may be in for a world of hurt. <laughs> Put simply, I could not install nor could I activate my NVIDIA GPU on the hybrid laptop that I tested. Now Deepin has developed a tool called Graphics Driver Manager, which is inexplicably not pre-installed, but it is available in the App Store. On the surface, it seems brilliant. It has this ability to switch between a few different Intel-based drivers and then Bumblebee functionality. The intended result, of course, is to tap into that NVIDIA Prime feature set to enable smart graphics switching. Attempting to activate this option though resulted in switch failed multiple times on multiple machines. And it's something that I've confirmed with a, a few of you as well. I resorted to firing up terminal and installing the NVIDIA dash driver package, which should have got me the NVIDIA 440 series driver, but NVIDIA settings was nowhere to be found. NVIDIA SMI wouldn't work in terminal. I, I just could not use my NVIDIA card on the Deepin20 beta. Now again, bear in mind, it's still early in the beta phase, and hopefully this will be ironed out, 
But if not, again, deal breaker. My fellow uh, Destination Linux Network podcaster, Eric Adams, recently commented that Deepin's appeal is only skin deep, and in extended testing, it just remains unusable for him as a daily driver. You know, for getting things done. This made me start thinking about my own obsession with Deepin. It's sexy as hell. It sets a ridiculously high bar in the looks department. And I think that's a bonus for the perception of Linux in general. Certain apps like the screen capture utility are amazingly useful, but they're also not locked to Deepin and you can install those on other distros. But really, why am I not using Deepin as my daily driver? I think it's the pain points. Distributions like Pop! OS, they have a tendency to ease user friction by drilling down and solving even the smallest of issues. Whether that's having an NVIDIA driver present and activated, even during a live USB session, or having certain necessary software available to effortlessly install. It's, it's frustrating, because Deepin is beautiful and I want to embrace it. Then again, an Ubuntu 2004 spin that combines the strength of Ubuntu coupled with the Deepin desktop environment, well, that now exists. I'll emphasize that despite this being a fairly lengthy video, this is by no means a concrete review. I'm gonna check back in on Deepin 20 once it leaves beta and we'll revisit some of these issues and see if they've worked themselves out.